What's up, my name is Michael, I'm a teacher, and this is my reaction to the Cold War Oversimplified. Feels like it's a good time to react to this, considering what's happening in the world. Before I start the video, I just want to say thank you. I don't know if I'll be able to upload this video before I reach 20k. I'll try to do it. But thank you so much, it's unreal. I'm having so much fun. And so previously when I've done Oversimplified, some of you guys have mentioned that sometimes he gets the facts wrong or something is, you know, wrong. So please educate me down in the comments. I don't know that much about the Cold War. I know the basics. I don't teach this pretty much. So I never have to mention this. I'm pretty rusty. I don't know that much about it. I'm here to learn. So please educate me down in the comments. Without further ado, let's go. I've decided that in order to sell more merch, I should do a face reveal wearing some of it. So are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Boom. New minimalist and Cold War merch available now. And get the new limited edition Churchill character. Not bad. Uh, looks like th that's me. Pin before it sells out. <laughs> with more characters coming in the future. Link in the description down below. The year is 1917. Fighting rages on the Eastern Front of the First World War. Both Germany and Russia are on the brink of collapse. Soldier, I need you to bring me this man. Got it. Found him, sir. What? So this is about to be the Russian Revolution, right? Where they killed the last Tsar and Lenin took power. Am I wrong? No, not Lenin. Lenin, the Russian uh, communist. Hey. What? Why would I need a beetle? Lenin, the Russian communist. He was exiled to Switzerland. You know what? I'll do it myself. Who Communism. wants to start a revolution? <laughs> the Germans put Lenin on a train and sent him all the way back to Russia, hoping he and his mates would create an internal crisis. And create an internal crisis they did. The government was overthrown, and Lenin was in charge. He immediately pulled out of the First World War, made the country communist, started a three-year-long civil war, got shot, broke the economy, caused I just have to ask, so why did they pick him? Like, who was he before all of this? Like, why did they pick him of all the people? Had he done something special, a high rank, or wh who was he? And then he died. On his deathbed, he said, Hey, man. Tell whoever's in charge of giving people jobs not to let that jerk Stalin become the next leader. Oh, yeah, By the yeah, way, yeah. who did I put in charge of giving people jobs? That would be Stalin, sir. <sighs> Stalin was a rising force in the Communist Party. He still had some opponents, but conveniently, all of them were arrested or disappeared. So that was lucky. And so Stalin took over. He implemented his five-year plans, which transformed the country from an agriculture-based economy to an industrial one. And like Lenin before him, he reigned with terror. Anyone who dared criticize or oppose him would either be killed or left to rot in the horrendous Soviet work camps. Then a short man with a silly mustache tried to take over the world, punched the Russians Aye. all the way to Moscow, and then the Russians... I know what that's called. Operation Barbarossa. With some help from their faithful ally, the Winter punched them all the way back to Berlin. At this point, being allies, mm. America, the UK, and the Soviet Union were good chums. They held a couple of conferences near the end of the war to decide what would happen next. Hey Stalin, after all your trials and tribulation, you must be pretty happy to be stand- Wasn't Truman the dude who dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki? I forgot the president before him, but the president before him was the one who developed it. But then he died and Truman took over and he's the one who made the decision to drop the bomb. Am I wrong? I'm not that good with American presidents. Ending here in Berlin, Tsar Alexander made it all the way to Paris. Uh, hey, uh, j just give me a second. Hey man, I think something's up with Stalin. I know, yes. right? What should we do? Shall I tell him about the bomb? <laughs> yeah, tell him about the bomb. That will scare him. So, we got this crazy new big A-bomb that can destroy an entire city in one go. Yes, my spies told me already. Oh wait, I meant to act surprised. Wow, <gasps> that's amazing. He already knew. How? Um, am I sure I want to send nuclear secrets via unsecure public coffee shop Wi-Fi? Am I ever? Dude, use a VPN. And speaking of VPN, I knew it. If, I like knew me, it. you take internet safety seriously, 
then you need NordVPN. Uh, yeah. NordVPN hides your online activities from outside intruders, preventing anyone from stealing your personal data and stopping your service providers selling your data to advertisers. With over 5,000 servers in 62 countries, it allows you to surf the net anonymously and securely. And it's simple to use. With just the click of a button, you can connect to a server halfway across the world, even Ow. allowing you to access streaming services from that specific territory. Say, for example, you wanted to watch a certain oversimplified video that for some reason has been <gasps> blocked in your country. Oh, some people told me about this. When I uploaded the Hitler oversimplified video that it's blocked in Germany now and again. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's blocked. So people are not able to see it in Germany. Hmm. With NordVPN, you can. It works seamlessly across why. PC, mobile, and tablet. Go to nordvpn.com slash oversimplified to get an amazing 75% off. That's wow. just $2.99 per month with an additional month free for a limited time. So again, that's nordvpn.com slash oversimplified also in the description box down below. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. The a Does the A stand for atomic or ass? Then America dropped their big A-bomb on Japan, and World yeah. War II officially came to an end. Hooray! We won! Okay, so now it's time to establish the New World Order. Stalin, you're in charge of Eastern Europe. Now, we want you to let them all hold elections. Oh yes, of course, elections. And these elections will be free and fair, right? Oh yes, certainly, free and fair. Definitely free and fair. Communist, communist. And they still are? Eh? Communist, 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 communist. If that's not free and fair, I don't know what it is. Throughout Eastern Europe, Soviet puppet governments were established uh, as a enough. buffer zone between the USSR and the West, with Churchill proclaiming an iron curtain had descended across the continent. The relationship between the old allies was deteriorating fast. Over the next few years, the British intervened in the Greek Civil War to prevent a communist takeover. In Turkey, the Russians began demanding more control of Turkey's sea access routes, which prompted the US to send their largest battleship to Turkey for a friendly visit. After World War II, Iran was now occupied by both the Soviets and the British, with an agreement to both pull out once the war was over. The British pulled out. Stalin was like, you know what? I think I might stick around. All in favor of kicking Russia out of Iran? You want to know something? You guys suck. Pressure from the UN forced the Soviets to leave. And with the... He was up to no good. He was such a terrible man. So many people died because of him. I've heard so many stories about poverty and famine and why people died because of Stalin. If you think your life was rough, uh, look up Stalin and what he did to, to people. The establishment of NATO, the Soviets had no doubt that the West was out to encircle and destroy them. And America announced the... Do you guys want to bet if Sweden and Finland will join NATO or not? I think we're close to it. Truman Doctrine, in which they basically said, those guys are not cool, cannot be trusted, and we will do everything we can to prevent the spread of communism around the world. Many view this moment as the official declaration of the Cold War. Mm. Back in Europe, everyone was living in a post-apocalyptic void brought on by the Second World War. Cities reduced to rubble, not enough food, it was terrible. This is great! The more they suffered, the more likely it is they'll turn to communism. Dude, you're really messed up. What's yes. wrong with you? My father a lot used to of punish things. me severely. America realized what was going on and quickly made a move. Under the Marshall Plan, they sent $12 billion to Western Europe for its economic recovery. The countries of Stalin's Eastern Bloc looked on with envy. Hey, Czechoslovakia, you want to come get some economic aid? Yeah, but I have to check with my mom first. <laughs> Sorry, America. Yeah. I can't come. This was a full-on economic battle raging between capitalism and communism in Europe. If the Western nations developed faster and better than the East, that would be a defeat for Stalin. So he set up his own rival economic recovery plan, which he called Comic-Con, and he also set up Common Form, which gave him more political control over the Eastern Bloc. But nowhere did this economic battle rage harder than in the city of Berlin. Caught over a hundred miles behind Soviet lines, the city had been divided up between the Allies, and the Western segments were still under Western control. East Berliners could travel freely to West Berlin, see the economic prosperity and think, hmm, maybe this communism thing ain't so great after and that's when they built the wall after that. So what I'm trying to do nowadays is to learn more about the conflict, Ukraine and Russia and what's happening right now. And I hope to get some information or some background out of this video. But if I don't or I miss something, please educate me. Let's see if I can put one and one together after the video. After all, I'm gonna have fun tonight. Probably not, because I'm a very slow thinker, so I come up with things, like, hours after I've seen it. You're home late. Oh, Stalin. I was just out with my friends. Friends? You stink of capitalism! You're out engaging in imperialist debauchery again! I swear, Ivan, I can't keep doing this. Stalin wanted the West out, so he said, Hey, guess what? I'm blockading all of your supply routes to West Berlin. What are you gonna do about it? I suppose we'll just fly the supplies in. All right.
right, Truman. You in this round. The Berlin Airlift was an incredible undertaking and a major success for the Western Allies, and Stalin ended his blockade of West Berlin. His aggressive actions worried the West, but not as much as this did. The, the Soviet Union had bomber? developed their very own atomic bomb. The USA no longer had a nuclear monopoly. The world now knew that if a maybe that isn't the one, but I've seen videos of it and I've heard stories that they had an atomic bomb called the Tsar Bomba. And that is supposed to be to be the biggest atomic explosion yet recorded. I'm sure they have bigger and worse weapons now, but that's the biggest they've ever exploded. I hope I'm right. A major war broke out between the two superpowers. It would be more destructive than anyone could imagine. Yes. So it was comforting when Stalin came out and said that war between the Soviet Union and the West was unlikely. Oh, wait, inevitable. He said it was inevitable. Hey, you know who I haven't checked in on in a while? My good friend, China. Whoa. What happened to you? What happened to them was a full-blown civil war that had been going on since 1927. The People's Liberation Army, under the leadership of Mao Zedong, successfully defeated the Republic of China, who fled to Taiwan. The now communist China and the Soviet Union signed a mutual defense treaty. This was terrible news for the West. But wait. There's more. After the Second World War, Korea was divided along the 38th parallel. In the north, the Soviets set up a communist regime. In the south, America set up an anti-communist regime. Both were led by very sweet-looking old men, but don't let that deceive you. They were both ruthless dictators, and both dreamed of reuniting Korea under their own regime. Now that he had the bomb, Stalin was feeling a little more cocky, and he finally gave Kremlin. Kim permission to attack. The north launched a surprise invasion of the south on June 25, 1950. With Soviet aid, the North Koreans steamrolled through, taking Seoul in just three days and replacing one ruthless dictator with another. The UN were freaking out and quickly created an emer- I, I feel ignorant for saying it, but isn't that the Korean War? I've never even studied it, so I don't know anything about it. I've seen documentaries on the Vietnam War, but I've only heard about the Korean War. Emergency force made up of troops from 16 countries to defend the South. The West still held Busan and made landings at Incheon near Seoul. They pushed the North Koreans out of Seoul, replacing the ruthless dictator that had replaced the first ruthless dictator with the same ruthless dictator that had previously been replaced by the new ruthless dictator. Oh. And the West then continued all the way up the Korean Peninsula. At this point, China was getting worried that the UN may just keep going. The US had sent this guy to lead the operation. After winning the Pacific Theater of World War II, General Douglas MacArthur's head was big and his balls were bigger. He reassured President Truman that there was absolutely no no way at all that the Chinese would ever get involved. Meanwhile, half a million Chinese troops were crossing into Korea. Nuke em. No. Nuke em. Uh, No. Ah, yeah. oh, come on. You're fired. The US <laughs> considered the nuclear option, but now that the Soviets also had the bomb, they didn't want to risk all-out global destruction. The communists pushed the West right back almost to the exact same spot they had all started from, and they ended up in a stalemate, where they remained until both sides finally agreed to work towards a peace settlement in 2018. Back in America, Americans decided they wanted a new president who would be tough on communism, so they elected famed World War II general Eisenhower, who is really hard to draw. Sorry. It's 1953. Hey, Stalin. How you doing? Oh, he's dead. He had a cerebral hemorrhage and his reign of terror kind of came back to bite him in the ass because he had imprisoned all of his best doctors and those that were left were too terrified to treat him. The new leader, Nikita Khrushchev, called a meeting and said, Hey guys, you know how Stalin was imprisoning and murdering us all for doing basically nothing? Yeah, he was kind of a jerk. I'm really not sure oh, yeah, how this yeah, is yeah. news to you. <laughs> Khrushchev went on a campaign of de-Stalinization. Statues of Stalin were taken down, Stalingrad was renamed, and Khrushchev announced that he wanted the Soviet people to be happy and would allow greater freedom in the Soviet Union. So how did that work out? Well, an uprising in East Germany was brutally suppressed, a revolution in Hungary was brutally suppressed, and demonstrations in Poland were brutally suppressed although he did finally allow some mild reforms. Back in the Soviet Union, he permitted right. more cultural expression, but then began banning stuff based on his own personal taste. Modern art looks like a child urinated on a canvas. Banned. Jazz music sounds like the feeling of needing to fart. Banned. Your poetry is really depressing. So uh, I, I find it very hard to like commentate on, on this because this is a subject I'm not that familiar with. So this is a video more of me learning <laughs> than actually teaching you guys something. Because as I said in the beginning of the video, I do teach some history in school, but I teach like certain parts and I never get to teach about this. I never had the opportunity or I never had to study it. So I don't know that much about it. Well, let's see what it is. How could anyone in the Soviet Union be depressed? You're banned. Khrushchev wanted the Soviet why. people to be happy, but not like that or that or that. Young people began enjoying a boring Western pop culture. Isn't there a saying like communism sounds good, but it doesn't work? I think it's like that. Son, remove that disgusting imperialist apparel at once. Shut up, dad. You can't tell me what to do. 
Well, would you look at that? Turns out he can tell me what to do. The oh. West had initially liked the cut of Khrushchev's jib, but world events soon soured relations even more. The two sides were spying on each other a whole lot throughout the Cold War. The KGB had spies and informants in nearly every aspect of Western life and government, so much so that whenever the US tried to send spies into the Soviet Union, the KGB were usually ready to arrest them on the spot. Members of the Manhattan Project aided the Soviet Union in acquiring the bomb. Wasn't Putin part of the KGB? I, I know that for a fact, but what was his part? What did he do? Like, yeah, please explain. Some Amer it looks like Harry Potter. He even has a scar on his forehead. American officials believe they were on the wrong side. I'll sell you three secrets for $5 million. Okay. Go ahead. The Good Allies deal. are digging a tunnel under East Berlin to tap your communications. There's an American agent living at this address in Moscow. And sometimes, when I'm home alone, I like to put on my wife's dresses, sit in the corner, and cry for hours. <laughs> Very interesting. In America, fear took hold during the Red Scare and the McCarthy trials. American values imploded as fear of communism collided with freedom of thought and expression. And communist kind of became a buzzword thrown around to describe anything people didn't like. Hollywood? Mm. Communist. Your next door neighbor's dog? <laughs> Communist. When the grocery store cashier asks if you need a bag when you clearly can't carry 10 tubs of bacon in your hands? Communist. But one area in particular where the US had an edge over the Soviet Union was in its espionage technology. In particular, U-2 spy planes flew across Russia carrying out surveillance from the skies. There was a nasty incident in 1960 though, when one was shot down and Khrushchev was furious. Who the hell is this? He's a high altitude weather enthusiast who flew off course. Okay, that sounds... How high up could they fly? I've heard about the U-2, but, and they were very high altitude, but like how high up? Plausible. Wait a minute. Why does he have a gun and a poison needle? Because he's a very naughty high altitude weather enthusiast. Aye. But much to America's concern, the Soviet Union appeared to be ahead in the space race. Everyone freaked out when Russia launched the world's first satellites, and then they actually sent a man into space. Uh, his name was Yuri Gagarin. Gagarin? Ga Gagarin. Oh no. Yes, but that's his name. Even worse, there also appeared to be a missile gap in the Soviets' favor, and Khrushchev was so confident that he even allowed the US to set up a technology exhibit in Moscow, attended by a certain vice president, Richard Nixon. Check this out, we have color TV. Yes, but we've been to space and can obliterate you with our massive nuclear arsenal. Aye. Check out this vegetable peeler. Cool. Tensions increased <laughs> further when both sides upgraded their atomic bombs to hydrogen bombs. And after West Germany was allowed to join NATO in 1955, Khrushchev set up the Defense of Warsaw Pact, strengthening the military ties between the Soviet Union and its satellite states. In 1960, Americans decided they wanted a new president who would be tough on communism, so they elected John F. Kennedy. The Soviet Union was advancing its technology, but it was also bleeding its coffers dry, and all of the money was going towards the military, not the people. Life under communism was still as hard as ever, and Berlin remained a thorn in the Soviet side. The contrast between the economically prosperous West and the struggling East was clearer day by day, and East Berliners were still able- Das Boot? Isn't that a reference to the submarine movie? It's a very good movie. Rat on a stick, boiled shoes. Oh God. ...to freely travel to the West. Now, many of them were deciding to stay there. And that part it was it was probably true. Rat on a stick. There, millions defected to West Germany via West Berlin, causing Eastern factories to lose workers and taking a heavy toll on the economy. Soviet leaders decided this couldn't continue any longer. First, Khrushchev tried this: leave West Berlin, or else, or else what? Or else, I'll be really mad at you. Yeah, no, we're gonna stay. Listen, man, West Berlin is ours, East Berlin is yours, that's just how it is. Kennedy felt pretty good about his show of American resolve, but wait a second, did you catch that? Let's replay it. East Berlin is yours. Uh-oh, Kennedy just told Khrushchev that the USA wouldn't interfere in what the Soviets did with their section of Berlin, so Khrushchev came up with a new idea. We're gonna build okay. a wall, and it's gonna be a big, beautiful wall, and it's gonna keep out all the Mexicans. Don't say that's wrong, it's gonna keep <laughs> We've heard that one before. God damn. Keeping these Berliners. Oh, sorry. It's gonna keep in all the Mexicans. On August 13th, 1961, <laughs> Berliners that was woke good. up to find their city divided into two, with barbed wire and guards blocking the border between east and west. Over time, a wall was constructed throughout the city. Families were torn apart. Thousands would risk their lives escaping over the wall, and hundreds would die trying. To the despair of Berliners, the West were unable to do anything about it, but the wall did put on full display the failure of the communist system. As Kennedy said, democracy is not perfect, but we have never had to put a wall up to keep our people in. As part of the so can I ask a question so they built a wall 
But how far did it actually stretch? I know people try to escape through or, you know, underneath and there are museums showing how people escaped from east to west. But how far did it actually reach? What I'm trying to ask is if you went far enough north or south, were you able to just walk around the wall and into Berlin? Or were you trapped somehow because everything else is under Soviet control? Like, how did it work? the agreement between the two sides, US diplomats were still allowed to travel to East Berlin, but suddenly, East Berlin crossing guards started giving them the business, and Kennedy was like, nah -uh. In October, the US rolled tanks up to the crossing point at Checkpoint Charlie as a show of strength. The Soviets did the yes. same, and the two were in a That's standoff. Unheard of. They stayed like that for 16 hours, and the world braced for nuclear Armageddon. Thankfully though, Kennedy called Khrushchev directly and was like, Hey man, this is getting way too hot. How about you back your tanks up by an inch and we'll do the same? Sounds good. Okay, how about you back your tanks up by another inch and we'll follow suit? Alright, hey, you want to do another inch? And they both very slowly inched away from the apocalypse. Phew, let's hope that's the biggest crisis of my presidency. Uh... It wasn't. Wasn't the biggest crisis like Cuba when Khrushchev wanted to put missiles on Cuba or were there already missiles on Cuba? I mean, that's how unfamiliar I am with the Cold War. I should know about these things. I get it. So it's a bit ignorant. But the things I teach in school is like ancient civilizations, that part of history, Mesopotamia, Egypt, uh, parts of ancient Greece. I mean, that, those sort of things are interesting to me and this too. But I never have to really deep dive into the Cold War because that's an older age bracket that I'm, that I'm not responsible for. All right, that's part one. I think I'll split this video into two. So like part two is a separate video. Otherwise, this video will be like an hour long and I don't want that. I had a couple of questions and I know some of you are really good with World War Two and World War One and also Cold War history. Please educate me, help me out. I had questions, so answers down below. I do read them. Another 500 of these videos and I'll be able to attend who wants to be a millionaire and maybe win <laughs> all right part two is coming up and if you want to help me become the coolest teacher in school you can subscribe it will help a lot my students would love it especially thank you take care and bye bye